your questions as well as the answers, please. Um, I have a question for Donald. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a like film idea that I want to start scripting, but I don't know how to do it. I'm just I'm going to detail about the characters and stuff, but about getting it into a script, I don't know how to do it. Start with a synopsis. What's, what's um, basically, it's just a, a brief <laughs> sit down, <laughs> <laughs> a brief summary of. The whole story, like a page, page and a half max. I, I've done that, but I just, um, I've had a look at other scripts and stuff. They're sort of laid out. In a, um, how did you get support with writing a script? Um, I found out there's a program called Final Draft, and if you can, I don't know say, then just get a crap copy. You do have a criminal barrister. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I hasten to add <laughs> defence. I only yeah. defend. Right. <laughs> we can pretend you didn't hear <laughs> But yeah, um, final draft that will teach you how to lay out a script, and that so you can put in your characters and you can put in your story. Um, write it from how you want people to read it as well like how exactly do you want people to it needs to be as clear to you as it will be to other people mm -hmm. and, that, and make it interesting if your story is really good then just write and that with scripts i'll tell you this right now i'll get sent quite a few scripts and i've read quite a lot of scripts as an actor spelling mistakes mm -hmm. people just don't grandma it's just not there but it doesn't matter if the story's strong and the dialogue strong, <clears throat> like you overlook it. And so just write. Uh, for anyone in there that is trying to get into the film, write. It's the only way you're going to control your own career. <coughs> and if you want, like, offering the mentorship, um, you can send it to me. I'll read it. I'll help you out. Literally. Is this a follow-on question? No, it's not. Is it a brand new question? It's a brand new one. I'm going to come to you in just a moment, okay. only because I thought young lady there, okay. towards the left. Yes, you. Yes, yes, you. <laughs> right, you. Good evening, everybody. Would you stand up, please. Don't be shy. Um, I just wanted to follow on from what Roseanne said, um, not just because she's my old friend, but it's a good point about sending your work. Um, but I just wanted to um, ask, on behalf of everybody here, who might be thinking of doing that, um, how do they go about protecting their ideas? Because obviously, if you send something to somebody, you know, you've got the legality aspects of it in terms of, you know, protecting your work, your interests. Um, there is one way. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, um, there is one way. Um, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the, the hood way. Um, you send it to yourself on recorded delivery first. That's all you need to do, and then it's yours. Just send it to yourself, bind it, recorded delivery, and then keep it. I mean, that's to start, and then obviously, you know. I, um, I'm actually here with one of my partners in crime. His name is Sorry, Austin. forgive me. You send it to yourself. Send it to yourself, record, record delivery. delivery. How many of you knew this? Because I, I had no idea. Yeah, and then it's yours. Then don't open it unless it, case comes, unless it comes up. Unless, some, unless someone's, you know, gone ahead and done it. Then don't open it, and then you open it in front of a court. Um, a way I used to use. Um, especially when you have, don't know someone personally, you're sending it online. When you uh, have written the article before you release it to them so that they can publish, send it as a screen grab, as an image, because then they can't copy and paste the text. They can only see what you've written. They can't lift it themselves. Mm -hmm. And after they've paid you half or paid you in whole or whatever the arrangement is, then you release the, the finished piece to them. Yeah. But to be honest, though, you know, I, I, it's difficult to get your head around that, especially if you're a creative. Mm -hmm. It is very difficult. So see, you know, see, ask, ask for advice, you know, and, and one of the, and, and keep good company, keep good company, people who can help you. For example, I work very closely with, with uh, Fahad, who's got the mic over here, and, and he's like, he's inspired me so much um, to just not be afraid to ask questions and to go out and, and say, you know, and just hold your corner, your ground. This is what I'm good at. This is what I'm going to stick to. And this is where I need your help in. So start off with the whole recorded and delivery thing if need be, but then go elsewhere and, and, and just ask. 
in fact, no fact, fact, were you going to make an observation that I see you have the mic before we return to you and your question? Um, I have not ignored you. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, my name is Fahad, I'm from Saudi Arabia, and this is the question for Roseanne. Um, she was actually, um, she's a mentor to me. And the question is, how do you make, now that we have social media, now we have, there's no borders, and geography doesn't exist anymore, and, and people are consuming your, your content from all over the world, mm -hmm. and someone who has been, started their career here based in the Middle East and now helping me really reach the rest of the world. How do you make global local and how do you make local global? Because I think mm -hmm. now more than ever, a yeah. um, little mm -hmm. background about myself, I was head of Arabic for Facebook. So I was part of that boom that happened and mm -hmm. contributed to social media and YouTube by being part of Awkward Black Girl. Um, if you guys oh, didn't yeah. watch yeah. it, you yeah. watch yeah. it. Yeah. Um, yeah. He plays a man. Oh, um, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> What, what, my, what attracted me to Roseanne, and I think what an opportunity this generation has that the previous didn't, is you have a voice that can be heard by anyone. So how did you manage to kind of hone on that and actually, you know, reach a point where I had, you know, was reached out to you and became a mentee? So does it come to this, how do you make your material relevant? Um, to the lives of the... the it's it's difficult to. because nowadays producers and consumers are one and the same. So that, that channel of information, you know, the, if you break down the word information, it's to inform. And that comes in a form. So it's, you know, A to B. And that's just completely shattered now, thanks to the internet. So, and actually I speak about this quite, re quite regularly. And, and um, there are so many people creating their own platforms. Um, and for, the reason why I go back to my original point, and, and that is identifying who you are first and celebrating that is because regardless of what's going on around you, you are still unique and you are still one, only one. So my, my only word of advice in this is it's, it's definitely not easy. We are in a very saturated environment and it's about never losing faith in your creativity and um, and, and utilizing literally every opportunity, every opportunity, and there are many. Um, but in terms of staying relevant, the thing is, you know, the way I see it is what is relevant? Who, who deemed it, uh, who deemed it a trend? And these, and these is, you know, and these are always my questions. This is always what I'm, mean. and language, language for me is so important. Um, Returning markets, for example, is a phrase I find really irritating because none of, sorry, emerging markets, because none of these markets that we look at are emerging. They are all returning. Africa is a returning market. We are not new to wealth as Africans. We have been wealthy many times over. So um, it's things like that. Like, don't feel that you need to fit into any particular rhetoric or any particular line of information that's being delivered to you by you know, these standardized so-called international networks, because if they are international, then where, where is the international representation? Because all I see, you know, is, is a particular group or, you know, for example, the underrepresented audiences as mentioned. So for me, it's just find your corner and please stick to it and fight for it and push for it in every way you possibly can. And there are you know, Sonia, for example, has provided this opportunity for all of us to sit together and meet and talk. Can I just come to Sebastian on this? Because mm -hmm. he's found a corner. You fight for an eight million people, as I understand it, mm -hmm. at Watch That Corner. Sebastian, yeah. how have you become um, relevant to 5.8 million people on your, on your TV channel on, on, online? Um. And don't start with our humble business. <laughs> <laughs> tell you, tell us, or um, give us an insight into how you've managed to achieve that. Well, um, I'll say it was from using YouTube. Obviously, it was like all through YouTube. So using YouTube as a platform, um, and then I started to create little sketches and things like that with different people so there were comedians that I really liked and then I'll link up with these comedians and say okay cool let's do a sketch on this and that was the one that was for the t-shirt um, it was called how not to chat up a girl and it was with Adolf, Adolf comedian and then we've done like a, a comedy sketch and then that one I think it reached like about um, it's it, now it's on that like half a million views but it reached like 
a large amount of views like in the space of a week and it was on like world star hip hop and stuff like that which is like a big American site mm -hmm. and then through that it was just building on different concepts here and there starting other formats finding other talent giving other people platforms and yeah. and 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 um, creating it was like a little movement you know so started to put content in there and then another thing with YouTube I'd say you have to kind of understand how it works. So um, using trends and to, to, to make things go viral, attaching yourself to um, certain types of talent so that when they get, so, so that it's already popular before it's even out because these people have a certain amount of followers or something like that. And then being smart with the type of titles you use on YouTube um, yeah. and yeah, just trying to think outside of the box. I haven't like just I haven't clocked the game like with YouTube, but <laughs> I would say there is there is like little um, things here and there that you can use to try and um, get those views. And those views, what they've done is YouTube isn't great at paying people. So the money from YouTube, like if you want to be rich over YouTube, from YouTube, you have to be getting millions of views, Mid, like a ridiculous amount. Like it's ba basically it's about. A million views is about a thousand dollars. So, so it's it's and that's dollars and and that's a million views. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that FYI? It's, it's, Can I just add it's to that? Not, um, I was yeah. in Google which headquarters the other day, and to start earning money, you need ten thousand subscribers. Yeah. So yeah, it's, even yeah. if you get a million views, because the cut the chat program that I do collectively has had over a million views. Seen no man. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, you, yeah, you don't. We, we don't. We don't. But the thing is, those views. To me, the views are much more powerful. If I can, I've got so many opportunities from those views that the money, the money gets.